Hey there and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm actually doing a video of fragrances that I love but yet rarely reach for and this is a video that I actually saw on Joss Jane's channel and she and I spoke in the comments and I was like I'm gonna do this mainly as a reminder to myself that I love these fragrances and I need to be better about using them and secondly, I just find that it's a reminder for all of us to wear the things we own, wear the things we love, and to not forget about things in our collection that we already have and kind of shop your stash or shop your collection. So we'll get into it. If you're already a longtime viewer of my videos, then you might have seen these before, but I'm going to get into a little bit more depth about them and a little bit more of a review and why I love them and why... I can't figure out why I'm not wearing them and if you're a new viewer hi welcome and don't forget to subscribe I put out new videos every single day and yeah we'd love to have you as part of the family so let's get into it the first one's actually poison by Dior and this one I mean I will say now is not the best time of year to wear this in my opinion this is like a very rich wild berry honey there's like a million notes in this fragrance, rich, rich fragrance that I would much prefer to wear in colder weather. But it was one that I kind of knew even from the beginning, it wasn't gonna be my favorite. I just found it for a great deal and I knew that even though it smells kind of dated to me, it smells a little bit too strong for me, like kind of one step outside of my comfort zone, it's not one I hated. So I impulse bought it and Every time I wear it, I'm like, oh, this is okay. It's not bad, I like it, but I don't know if I like it on me, and then I don't wear it for a long time. And now is not the time of year where I wanna to try to force myself to wear it, but I do wanna remind myself now that I do have it to try to enjoy it, to wear it in the colder weather, because I think it's a lot nicer in colder weather, and to give it a shot, because I did impulse buy it, and I feel a bit guilty about that, so, it's not one that I hate and maybe if I play with a little more I will get a little more into it. So that's Poison by Dior. Then we've got Love Story by Chloe. And I actually love this fragrance and I think honestly it's just the size. Like it's a 20 ml bottle and it kind of gets even more lost in my collection so I need to move the minis a little bit more forward. Um, but I like it. I mean this has neroli and orange blossom and so many of the notes that I enjoy. I mean, I have had so many Chloe's. I have tried so many Chloe fragrances. I still own so many that I don't really see myself buying another one from Chloe because they all kind of meld into one, Nomad excluded. Um, but I do like them. They're all very rose centric or white florals. They're all very feminine and super, super floral. So. I do like them. This is an especially nice one, especially for this time of year. I feel like now is the time I should really pull this out. It's a 20 ml bottle. I could easily finish it up and put it as part of my empties collection. So I really am going to try to move this up and start wearing this more because it is lovely. And it's not a super new fragrance anymore, but I do know that a lot of people did like Love Story. People still buy it. They're still making it. So if you own it or if you're curious about it, it is really nice. I just always forget about it because of its size. Then we have Beach by Bobbi Brown, and this one's a love or hate for sure, and I loved this one. I mean, this was one I always sprayed in department stores. It was a weird one that like I became adamant that I would not buy full price, and I would only let myself purchase this if I found it on sale. So I used to spray this and sample it for ages and ages until I found it at a Marshalls um, for like a heavily reduced price. And I was so happy and then finally had it and I used it for a good little bit. You can see a slight dent in it and then I just kind of forgot about it. And I think part of the reason is probably because I bought Bond Number no. 9's Fire Island and that's very similar. It's like a copper tone sunscreeny beachy vibe fragrance much like this one and I kind of prefer Fire Island. But they're so similar that I should use them interchangeably and I should make more of a point to use this up while I still enjoy these kinds of fragrances and the window of time that I can wear these kinds of fragrances where it's super appropriate is pretty small where I live. It's not like a very hot 
place constantly. It's not like Los Angeles, for example, or in the Caribbean where you can wear these kinds of fragrances a lot more months of the year. But I feel like I just need to get more into it. Now is a good time. Wear it in the spring and summer. Use it interchangeably because it's one I enjoy and I just forget about. And if I don't wear it in like the four months where it's appropriate, I will just forget about it and it'll sit there gathering dust till next year. Unless like there's like a random winter day where I want to feel beachy. But in general, I totally like this fragrance. If you like Neroli beachy copper tone sunscreen fragrances, this is still a really nice OG beach fragrance and I need to be better about using it. Hopefully this year. Then one I mentioned a while ago on my channel, uh, Silent Street by Derek Lamb Ten Crosby. This one I mentioned I got really inexpensive actually because the store was closing down and I bought two from his collection and it's so nice. I mean it's like everything I like. It's so musky and like it's like a pure white musk powder fragrance. It would be pretty easy to layer because it's pretty much just like a pure white musk. Super powdery, super clean and really really simple fragrance that is totally up my alley and I think I wore it pretty often like the first month or two that I owned it and then it just kind of lost, got lost in my collection. So this is one that I could wear year round because it just smells like white musk. If you like clean white musk powdery scents, totally recommend Silent Street. It's really nice. I just need to be better about using it because I actually do really like it and it's a really simple clean fragrance, honestly. So that is Silent Street. Then. Tuberose Noir by Zara, and this is the Zara Emotions line that uh, Joe Malone did, and I have the whole line, I've mentioned a couple times, I do have a review, one of my first videos was actually a review on the full line, because I bought the, what are these, the, I'm not sure, the 30 mil or something, um, 50 I think, yeah, oh, the 40 mil, the 40 mils of every single one, and there's eight in the collection. I like them all. I'll put the review for those in the description box or you can check my channel. This is a really nice fragrance. This was one of my favorites, like my top two. It's a beautiful tuberose. You get sandalwood. It's like a slightly sweet sandalwoody rich tuberose. It's stunning and I feel like this and many of that collection I wore a couple times each and I was really really into them actually for a while and then I got worried that they were going to run out, which is insane, but I don't know why I get this way, and that I wouldn't be easily, you know, wouldn't be easily purchasable or repurchasable for me because they're only available in Europe and I don't know how long they're going to be sold. So I stopped myself actively from wearing it, but that's insane because they're just going to go bad. I have so many fragrances, so I've made it more of a point even now already to pull out at least the ones that I know I adore, like my top four from the eight and start wearing them and this is one of them it's really nice if you like tuberose if you're in europe or can find a way to purchase them i definitely recommend them i know they're hard to find but i think they're worth it and they last a lot longer than her regular Jo malone fragrances which and these are sold at a fraction of the price so definitely recommend tuberose noir and then finally this is one that i actually do wear but this is 4711 and everyone knows this. I have this and then I have an 800 ml huge giant bottle that I've shown in my fragrance collection series where I refill this. And I think it's because the version I got is a splash bottle that, you know, I'll use it a couple days and then I'll just get annoyed that it's a splash bottle and I won't want to take it off and splash it on. And I really wish that it did have a sprayer because I know some of their newer bottles do. I don't mind that the 800 ml bottle is obviously a, a refillable kind of like splash bottle, but it's it's to refill this and I find myself not really using this because of that. So I might decant this into something so I use it more or I might just try to force myself to use this more because I love this. 4711 is one of my favorites of all time. It Eau de Cologne's from Europe in general I'm obsessed with and this one's stunning so I just need to be better about getting over the whole splash bottle thing and using this more often because it's beautiful and I have what I have 900 almost 900 mil of this currently so 
I really need to get into it and start wearing this more. But it's stunning. If you haven't tried this already, it's super inexpensive and totally worth every single dollar. So those are my fragrances that I love and have rarely reached for. I'm going to be better about using them when appropriate or when they match the season. And hopefully this has inspired you guys to pull out some hidden gems from your own collection as well. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!